Howdy friends and welcome to First United Methodist Church's online service for August 27, 2023. Today we are continuing with our sermon series, Pray Big, and we are looking at the prayer of surrender. I'm so glad you chose to join us today. God bless. Gracious and loving God, our Heavenly Father, we gather today to worship you, to celebrate the joy of living a life in your name, to give thanks for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we need you in every facet of our lives. We pray today that you will move boldly in our lives. Help us yearn for your presence more than we desire any distraction that would keep us from you. Help us grow in the fruit of the Spirit. Give us the revelation that leads us to walk closer with you. We pray for guidance from your Spirit to know your perfect will. Anoint us afresh daily. Pour your anointing over us. Help us to avoid withholding any of ourselves from you. Teach us to surrender our will to yours. And now, O oh God, we lift up the prayers of your people. Hear our prayer. We pray today in the glorious name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well,
Well, this morning we are continuing our Pray Big series as we try to understand the seven big prayers found within the Lord's Prayer. Last week we looked at the first big prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We talked about what kind of father our God is. And if you missed that message, I encourage you to go look it up and watch it also. Today we're going to look at the second phrase of the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray. And now, God, may your word be proclaimed, either through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Many years ago, Mother Teresa appeared on Robert Schuller's television program, The Hour of Power. Schuller reminded her that the show was being carried all over the United States and in 22 foreign countries, including her native Yugoslavia. He asked her if there was if there was one message that she would like to convey to all of those viewers, her response was, yes, tell them to pray and tell them to teach their children to pray. Jesus' disciples came to him after he had finished a time, of, time apart for prayer and they made the same request. Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus answered them with, what has become known as the Lord's Prayer. We find it both in Luke and in Matthew, and we're using the version from Matthew today. As I said, we're going to look at this phrase, Matthew 6, 10. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In this phrase, we find what I call the prayer of surrender. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The prayer of surrender, thy will be done. In praying that, we're saying, God, you're in charge. God, you're in charge. All those things that are unchangeable in my life, anything uncontrollable in my life, I'm going to give all of that to you. I'm going to give it up to you. Now, what does it mean to pray the prayer of surrender? To pray, oh God, your will be done in my life. Well, it means, it, it means we make three I would call stress-busting choices. If you've got uncontrollable circumstances in your life, if you've got uncooperative people in your life who just won't change, and you've got some kind of unexplainable pain in your life that you need to, then, then we all need to learn to pray the prayer of surrender. Surrendering to Jesus is the only solution to get peace in our lives. Now, Surrendering to Jesus. What does that mean? Well, it means three things. The first, surrendering to Jesus means letting go of control. Ouch, right? I just stepped on your, just pulling your feet back a little bit as I stepped on one of your toes, didn't I? Hmm. Every day we get up in the morning and we must decide who is going to be in control of our lives. Is it going to be me or is it going to be God? Every day it's a battle. There are things in our lives that we do not want to give up control of. We want to control it. We want to make our own rules. We say, surely God wants me to be happy. So I want to be my own God. But that creates stress. And stress relief always starts with letting God be God. It always starts with saying, God, I'm giving up control because you can control the things that are out of control in my life. The Bible says this in Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. I rule the nations. I rule the earth. God says, I'm in control. So you need to let go and know that I am God. You know, most of us know this verse as be still and know that I am God. The word be still, though, that phrase in Hebrew literally translates let go. Calm down, relax, lighten up, let go. It means to let go. Now, I don't know what you're going to face this week, what you're going to be carrying this week. You don't either, probably. But I can already tell you what God wants you to do. Let go and know let go and know. Let go and know. God says this is the first step to peace in your life no matter what happens. You've got to let go of control 
and know that God is in control. That's the starting point. Let go of trying to figure it out all by yourself and know that God can figure it out for you. Let it go. Whenever we face out of control situations, things that are beyond our control, we always tend to go to two, to one of two extremes, right? Some of you choose one and some of you choose the other. Sometimes we'll choose both. Some of us, when the more out of our control our life gets, the harder we try to control it, the more controlling we become. In fact, the more insecure we feel, the more controlling we will become. The more frightened, the more worried, the more insecure we are, the more controlling a person becomes. Secure people don't have control situations. They relax. But when you feel stressed, when you feel pressure, when you feel worried, when you feel inadequate, then you double up your effort and we always become more controlling. You say, I will make this thing happen. I will make this marriage work. I will make this job work. We double down our effort. We're not at peace at all. We're just tied up, tighter and tighter and tighter in that knot in our stomach. Now that's one extreme, right? The other extreme, some of us do the exact opposite. Sometimes those of us who do that extreme do this exact opposite. We just give up. We go into despair, we have that pity party, right? When everything is out of control in our lives, we pull back into our shell, we turn on the TV, we break out the bonbons, whatever it is, we turn off the lights, we hide under the covers. That's the extreme the other way. Now, both of those reactions to stress don't work. Instead of wallowing in pity and instead of becoming hyper-controlling and trying to control everybody and everything, Instead, we need to pray the prayer of surrender. The truth is we don't like the word surrender though, do we? When we think of surrender, we think of waving a white flag. We think I forfeit, I lose, I submit, but that's the very thing we need to do because it's out of our control. The number one reason that we are stressed is because we are in conflict with God. We are trying to do things that only God can do. We're trying to control things that only God can control. You cannot control your husband or your kids or your wife or your job or your future or your past or any of that stuff. You can't control it. The more you do it, the more you're trying to play God. And that puts us in opposition to God. We are fighting with God. And any conflict with God, we're gonna lose. And not only are we gonna lose, we're going to be tired and wiped out and fatigued. We're going to be emotionally drained. To avoid this stress, we need to pray the prayer of surrender. And the step one is letting go of control. The second thing surrendering to Jesus means is learning to be content. Hmm. This is the key, I think, to finding inner peace. There are things in life that can change. Absolutely. And that's the case, change them. If there are things in your life that can change, then change them. Go ahead, change all the things you can. But about what about the stuff that we can't change in our lives? The constant stress that it puts on us. The situation that is just never going to change. What do we do with that? The person that's never going to change. Well, let's talk about some of the alternatives. We can worry about it. Does that work? No. We can resent it and get bitter about it. Does that work? No. We can feel guilty about it or ashamed or, or regret it. That, that works, right? No. We can have self-pity about it. That doesn't work. No. We can be fearful and worry about it. No, not going to work either. There's only one thing that works in situations that we cannot change, and that's learning to be content. Paul understood this. Notice what he says in Philippians chapter 4. He says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. 
I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now, when Paul wrote this, he wasn't down at the San Luis Hotel relaxing on the beach. He was in prison in Rome. When he's writing, when he's writing, I have learned to be content in all situations. He is chained to a Roman soldier in a hole in the ground. So he knows what he's talking about. He says, I know, I know how to be up. I know how to be down. I know plenty, I know not. I've learned, he says, I've learned to be content. Now notice two things. First, first notice the word learned. Contentment is a learned experience. It is a learned behavior by nature. By nature, you and I are not a contented people. It's something that we must learn. It's a mark of maturity. It's emotional maturity to learn contentment. Im immature people are never content with anything. They're always discontented. Is that a word? I think so. <laughs> They're always upset. They have not learned how to be content. It's a mark of emotional and spiritual maturity. We must learn it. The other thing that I want to point out is it is only possible through Christ. Christ gives me the strength to be content. I can only be content because Christ has given me strength to be content. And I must learn how to be content, right? So I must learn it, and Christ gives me the strength to learn it. Psalm 37, 7 says this. Surrender yourself to the Lord and wait patiently for him. That's what we need to do. That's learning to be content. Surrendering to Jesus, which is the key to having peace in our heart, no matter what happens this next week. Surrendering to Jesus. Thy will be done. I let go of control. I learn to be content. And then I think the last thing it means, at least for now, is we need to leave the future to God. Surrender means leaving the future up to God. I'm not going to try to live in the future, right? I'm going to live today. I'm going to live one day at a time. I decide that no matter what happens today, I'm going to live for God. What happens today, I'm going to live for God. And I'm going to leave it to him, and I'm going to decide in advance to leave the results of my life up to God. It's not up to me. The results of my life are going to be up to God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. I'm not going to lean on me. I'm going to lean on God. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding of things. Whose understanding am I going to lean on? I'm going to trust God. Do that, and he will make your path straight. That's what he says. Do that. Lean on him. Lean on his understanding. Trust God, and he will make your path straight. Now, what does that mean? It means this. He's going to keep you on the right track. He says, if, if I choose to trust in the Lord and I don't listen to what I think is best, but I listen to what God thinks is best and I acknowledge him, if I submit to him, acknowledge him in every area of my life, my career, my family, my hobbies, my church, every area of my life, and I say, this, this, this is yours. This is yours, Lord. If I, Acknowledge him, submit to him. He says, I will make straight paths. He will keep you on the right path. You're not going to go off the rails in 2023. You're not going to flame out. You're not going to fall. I will keep you going in the right direction. I will keep you from going the wrong way. That's what God wants us to do. 
Would you like to have less stress and more peace in your life? Of course, the answer is yes. Then you and I have a decision to make. The decision is, am I gonna do what I think is best? Or am I gonna do what God tells me to do? What God thinks is best. Am I gonna do what I think? Am I gonna obey God's, am I going to obey God's word? God says, when I tell you, when I tell you what to do and you do it, I will take care of you. Do what I tell you to do and I'll take care of you. So here's, here's the question of the day. What area of your life is not surrendered to God? Now, some of you have not surrendered your finances to God. I know God says that I should give the first 10% back to him in a tithe, but I just can't afford to tithe. And that causes stress in your life. You have not surrendered your finances to God. Some of you have not surrendered your relationships to God. I know I should, for, I know I should forgive that person who hurt me, but I, I just can't. I'm not about to forgive them. And that's why you're under stress. Some of you have a secret sin that you have not surrendered to God. You have a habit that you have not surrendered to God. You have a hurt or a hang up that you have not surrendered to God. Some of you may have never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You've never surrendered yourself to be baptized and to connect with God and to connect with a church family. What area of your life is not surrendered to him. Surrendering to Jesus is simply saying, God, the war's off. I'm not going to fight you anymore. I want peace, not stress. Now, aren't you tired of being at war with God? I would think so. Surrender. Surrender is the ultimate expression of faith. Pray, thy will be done. The prayer of surrender. And discover the peace that God wants for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Well, friends, thanks again for joining us for this online service of worship, August 27th, 2023. I hope you found the prayer of surrender to be a prayer that you will choose to pray daily. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs>